Hey everybody, it's Lon Seiben and welcome to our first dispatch from CES 2018. I'm at the Pepcom event right now and these are events that I go to in New York City where a bunch of tech companies get into a room and we run around for three hours and try to meet as many as we can. Uh, this is the biggest show they do here at Las Vegas for CES, so we're going to be seeing a lot of folks in a few minutes, which will be, uh, join you'll be all joining me on that little adventure in a few minutes. But I do want to let you know first that this is sponsored by Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run. They're my favorite digital tuner for watching your live television on your home computer network with your set-top boxes and everything else. We've done a lot of content on this in the past, which I'll link to down below in the video description. And earlier today, we stopped by their suite, and they have a couple of new big product announcements that we're going to take a look at right now. So we are at the Silicon Dust Suite at CES, and uh, there's been a product that a lot of you have been hoping they would put together over the years, and that is a six-tuner cable tuner, and that is what they are coming out with mid-year. This is the six-tuner HD Home Run Prime. It looks a lot like some of their new over-the-air tuners, but as you can see here, there's a cable card popped in the slot right here. And that will allow you with a single cable card to tune six different things or record three things and tune three other things all at the same time. Six streams, uh, same cable card. So you can basically double your amount of recording and live TV watching without having to rent another cable card from your cable company. And later in the week, we're going to have an interview with the uh, CEO of Silicon Dust and talk a little bit more about this product, the DRM status, which I know a lot of you are waiting on. We've got some developments there. Uh, as well as some other things just about uh, cord cutting and cord shaving in general. So be on the lookout for that later in the week. And they also have another product they're announcing, which I don't have in physical form, but they are going to have a turnkey DVR solution that will consist of a tuner box like this. It'll be an over-the-air tuner, along with onboard storage that can take uh, 250 gigabytes of recording capacity for you. So instead of having to go out and get a NAS and get that thing connected up to your network, uh, you can get a single over-the-air device, hook that up, get the DVR, the recording engine installed on it, tune two live shows at the same time with that box. And then if you wanted to add more, you just buy a few more non-DVR tuner boxes to get additional TV on your network. A lot of people have been writing to me saying it's been a kind of a, a friction point of having to go out and buy additional hardware to get the recording engine. Now you can integrate it into the tuner itself. And the cool thing is you can get one of those tuners with the recording built in and then add in the six tuner prime and get uh, eight different things you can tune and record on your network because you can stack up more tuners and that uh, little device will do all of that. So great developments here from Silicon Dust and I again want to thank them for sponsoring our show coverage this year. And earlier today we stopped by a, another suite for a, uh, a demo of a pretty cool little product. It's called Notch and it's a motion tracking system that works with your smartphones. Let's take a look at that. So we're here at a suite at the Luxor where we are staying, and it uh, just so happens that the folks from Notch were here, and I'm wearing some notches right now. And what's cool about these things is that uh, they are motion trackers that can send data back to your smartphone. So if you are maybe a boxer, for example, and trying to improve your punch, you can uh, take a look at maybe what the perfect punch is and try to get your muscle memory trained to do that. In fact, you can track your movement in real time with this. There's a lot of benefits for uh, physical therapy and for athletes and everything else. And what's neat about how this works is that this is not some fancy optical system. These are all using uh, accelerometers, gyroscopes, and compasses to measure uh, body movement, which makes this very portable. So if you are maybe a surfer, you can take these things out in the water. They're completely waterproof. And they're telling me that these little devices here can record all of the data when they're away from the phone and they can just download that data back so you can review your motion after the fact. I think it's kind of a cool thing that you can uh, capture this data very easily just by <laughs> strapping yourself up here with some of these sensors. The app looks really cool and I think this kind of shows you the power of smartphone processors that you can make a very simple device and then offload all the computational tasks to the phone. And they sell these as a kit of six and this is what the little kit looks like. And you charge them up. This actually reminds me of like an 80s board game or something. Uh, you can charge them up inside the case here. And then they last, they said, for about four hours or so, maybe a little bit longer, depending on what, what you're doing. And uh, you can take them and attach them to yourself or to whatever you're trying to measure motion on and then capture the data. Uh, 379 for the kit, and you get uh, the developer's software with it so you can attach to your own apps uh, with this technology. Cool stuff. And last night we went to another event called CES Unveiled, and they had a couple of things there that I found interesting. The first was something called the Gemini, another one of these little palm-top PCs. 
uh, but the one they had there was running Linux, which I thought was pretty cool. It costs uh, $599 with an LTE connection, $499 without. A little expensive, but I know there's a market for these kinds of things, and they also have a little USB-C dock if you want to plug it into Ethernet. You know, a lot of folks like having that for IT scenarios and that kind of thing, so that was something kind of cool to uh, take a look at. Another thing that I saw there was DisplayLink XL, and DisplayLink has been making uh, this video technology that works with a lot of USB docks, and uh, they are now trying to get into some higher-end video formats, including uh, wireless VR kinds of setups, and they had something there demoing DisplayLink XL with an HTC Vive. And if you are a fan of the Twit Network, Father Robert Ballister was out there running around with that thing. And it looked like it worked pretty nicely, pretty low latency, and you could get uh, your, your HTC Vive or one of the other VR headsets there working without a tether back to your desktop. So that was pretty cool. And I got a look at the uh, Blink security system. They've got a new thing out called the Blink doorbell. Actually, not out yet, but it will be soon. $99. It does uh, just about everything you'd want one of those doorbell systems to do, but it only costs 99 bucks. You can talk back and forth on it. You can see the people knocking on your door, get notifications, and it runs on two AA lithium batteries that should last for a year or more. I covered that camera security system a few months ago. I'm going to do a follow-up on it because I have their outdoor cameras, and I'm really eager to check out the doorbell because there's no monthly fee with it either. So pretty cool stuff there. So now everyone's going into the Pepcom event here as we will be right now as well. We've got a lot more stuff to see inside, so let's head on in and take a look. So I'm over here at FLIR, and I don't have a product to show you right now, but we do have something kind of cool. This is an automotive system. You can't buy this for yourself at the moment, but it might be in your next car. And what it's doing here, as you can see as I'm talking, is it's identifying all these people that are walking by the camera, and it's able to discern them each individually, and it's doing this through a combination of uh, the FLIR heat sensors that they've been developing for a very long period of time, along with very fast processors. In this case, they've got an NVIDIA thing running here that is processing the image constantly and able to uh, pick out all the individuals walking around. And what this is going to be used for is for an application like a self-driving car. So if somebody happens to walk into the middle of the street on you, uh, the system should have the car stop the car if somebody is walking in front. And it's pretty cool, as you can see, uh, just how all of that works. So we can't really buy this yet, but we might see it in a car that you buy in the future. All right, so this thing on my head here is called the Real Max, and they are billing this as the widest field of view augmented reality glasses. And I have to say, this is not bad. It's a pre-release product. This is still kind of a prototype that I'm using right now. Uh, they also have a sensor up here, which is not yet working, but apparently this is going to read hand gestures as well. So you could interact with your environment a little bit uh, using your hands, but that isn't yet working on this. But one of the things that I've been finding with a lot of these AR products, ones that I've tried, ones I've heard about, is that the field of view isn't all that great. Uh, this one does do very well. I'd say it's a little bit better than my HTC Vive, and it's an all-inclusive package here. So the uh, unit that's controlling everything that I'm seeing is also attached to uh, the headset here, and it's running Android. So interesting technology, kind of nice. It's filling a, a good portion of my field of view here, and uh, we'll see where this one goes from here. So this is something that you can't really, well, you probably could buy it if you wanted to, but I think it's out of the reach of most consumers. But this is something you need to know about. This is called the Drone Hunter. And what it's designed to do is shoot down drones and it does that with these nets here that are fired at the offending drone using CO2. And it also has a drape net on there that if you miss twice here with these two nets, you can grab it with the uh, drone that net that kind of hangs underneath it. And the key to all of this device here is this radar system here. This can detect a drone up to a mile away. And you can put one of these on the drone, of course, for locking onto your target and shooting it down, which is what it does. But you can also maybe mount these on a building to be on the lookout for drones that are coming in. And apparently, uh, unauthorized drones are becoming more and more of a problem. Unauthorized meaning drones perhaps doing unlawful things, like moving drugs over a border perhaps. Or uh, in one case, we heard about a company that's having a problem with drones landing on its roof and stealing data from the company. Uh, you can get alerted to a drone coming in. You can scramble this thing and shoot down the drone that's coming towards your building. And it's kind of crazy that we're at this point already, but uh, consumer drones are plentiful and pretty powerful. Uh, this is the countermeasure. So over here at the PowerCast booth, and we looked at these guys a few months ago in New York City at another event. They've got now FCC approval for a wireless charging system that I thought was really cool then, and I still think it's pretty cool now. Uh, this is called the PowerSpot and it's going to sell for $50, $50, not that much money. And what it's going to do is work with devices that are compatible with it. 
and you can charge them over the air. And they have a couple of these cool little demo things here to show you how this works. So as I get close to the device here, you can see that signal getting stronger. And then as I move it back, you can see how it still is getting some power, but not as much. And if you just keep your devices near this thing, uh, it's going to charge up. Now, they anticipate that uh, there'll be many devices that will bake this technology into them. So you just put it down on the table next to the thing, like these headphones, for example. It'll beep and start charging. And then they're also going to have companies make uh, add-on peripherals, like a concept here for an Xbox controller that would replace the battery pack. And then whenever you're done playing, you just put the controller down next to the uh, spot there, and it will charge. And you can have as many devices that can fit around it uh, charge from it. Probably not going to be as fast maybe as like a super fast charging USB, but for something like a game controller when you're done for the night, uh, just put it down next to it. It'll charge it up and it'll be back up to full capacity without ever having to plug anything in or line it up on a pad or anything like that. So over here at the Movi booth, and they've got an Android smartphone here that has a projector built in as you can see here. And we're going to shoot it out onto this piece of paper so you can see what it's looking like. It's pretty bright, actually, given the uh, light that we're in in the room here. So it's good enough if you need to get a projector out in a pinch. doesn't feel all that much larger than a regular smartphone. It is powered by a MediaTek 6750V slash WT. And they're telling me it works on all four of the major carriers here in the United States. It costs $599, and it's unlocked. Uh, for that price point. So if you've ever been looking for a projector in a pinch, uh, this might be something worth taking a look at. Maybe we'll try to get a loaner in and see how it works in a full review. Hey, look who I ran into. It's it's Elias Saba from AFTVnews.com. How you doing? Hey, doing good, Lon. So for all of you who don't know Elias, he started a site around the same time I started the YouTube channel. We are both proudly independent workers now, right? Yep, yep, yep completely independent, working in our in our pajamas at home, you know, with the kids running around. Can't beat it, right? No, no, can't beat it. Can't. Best lifestyle ever. So, <laughs> so we are here at this booth for iDevices because uh, Elias is walking by and he said, I have to see this light switch. So what is this switch? What do you think? Yeah, so this is, just got announced uh, this morning, I'm pretty sure. And it, they're likely going to be the first to market that where it's a smart light switch. And you know there's like dozens of them and then they keep getting cheaper and cheaper. But this one's likely going to be the first one that has uh, Alexa capabilities built into it, meaning you actually speak to the switch. And it's full on Alexa, so basically you'll actually be able to play music through this thing. You'll actually be able to, you know, check the weather and all that stuff through this, not just control it with your voice. Obviously, there is that aspect, but you know, Amazon is pushing everything where they want an Echo Dot in every room, but those Echo Dots are controlling the smart light switches. And so, with this, you're kind of eliminating the Echo Dot, and you know, why not put those two devices into one? And you have basically an Echo Dot in your wall acting as the light switch itself. And so. You know, it seems like this is the way things are going to go eventually, where you know you're eliminating more and more of these devices. So, you know, why not if you can? Uh, right now, most likely the price point is probably going to be the thing that holds people off. They have not announced a price just yet, but from from based on their other products and what I've read from other people who've covered this already, it's looking like it's going to be north of hundred dollars. So, if you think of the Echo Dot as a fifty dollar device, and then these smart light switches. There are, you know, cheaper ones are around like the $30 range. Uh, you know, you're 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 definitely paying the premium to get that all-in-one device, but it seems like it's going to be a pretty slick device. Kind of cool to have all that integrated into into one yeah. thing here, yeah. And uh, and it's a, it's a light switch replacement. I guess you could get a bunch of other smart switches and then have one of these in each of the major areas of the house or something. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, you can have just this one in the room and then get the cheaper ones to put on your other light switches that this will essentially control. Because it is Alexa, that means it's connected to all of the you know literal thousands of Alexa skills. So anything Alexa controlled, this light switch itself will be able to control via voice. Um, and it seems like it's going to be a pretty pretty nice viable product. What's cool about Elias' site, he, he doesn't work for the company, but he is he is a big Amazon advocate. His whole site is about the Amazon ecosystem, so we ran into him here at Pepcom. And the funny thing is here is that uh, I sold Elias his first Fire TV. I finished reviewing it, put it up on the Lon.TV store. You bought it, and what happened? Yeah, and then I, I, I liked the device. I started writing about it. I started tinkering with it. The site took off, turned into my full-time job, and you know basically it all all started from, from Lon's, Lon's little Fire TV that I bought off of him used. So definitely go to Lon.TV slash store to buy all of the used devices. You too can start your own site too and work in your pajamas. So thanks, Elias. No problem, great, Lon. Great running into you. No problem. So if you're into health products and monitoring your health and everything, uh, this was something neat that I saw because typically if you're doing blood pressure checks, you need like a big cuff and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a blood pressure checker that is a watch 
It does your pulse and uh, activity tracking and that kind of thing, but you can push a button on this watch, which he's going to do right now, and what it's going to do is inflate the band, and it will take his blood pressure on his wrist, uh, which means you can always carry a blood pressure monitor along with you. And for those who have heart issues or something like that, uh, this might be a really good thing to have because if you're feeling like you're not sure about how you're feeling, you can take a blood pressure reading on the spot and know whether or not you need to seek medical attention. It's got all the FDA clearances and everything else, so it's pretty accurate as a blood pressure tool. It will squeeze your wrist, though, but uh, it's better than dying, I guess, so <laughs> probably a good thing to have around with you. This is kind of a cool thing. It's really miniaturizing things that used to be a lot larger. So if you're a gamer and you like to light up everything in your computer, have you ever thought about lighting up your hard drive? Well, maybe you can now. This is the HyperX Fury. This is a solid state disc that has lights on the top of it. So you can put some lights on it and have uh, not only the hard drive here go, it looks like they're also lighting up RAM now as well inside your computer. So if you don't have enough lights, you can get some more here. And you all know how much I love these little portable SSDs. Here's another one also from HyperX Kingston. This is a USB type C and it's going to be coming out soon. No price on this one yet either, but always good to see more choices for portable SSDs. So over here at the HP booth, and if your monitor is not big enough, you can go bigger now. This is a 65-inch big format display. Now I'm going to start shouting off some specs here because this thing's got a lot of specs to talk about. 4K, 120 hertz. It also supports NVIDIA G-Sync, so if you're hooked up to your PC, you will get the uh, best possible motion here because it will work in sync with your NVIDIA GPU. But the other cool thing about this, I'm going to have uh, my friend from HP here just go ahead and switch out. Uh, this is also an NVIDIA Shield that is built into the television. So you get not only an Android TV, but the NVIDIA Shield TV built right into it. This thing is really cool. I think I might want one of these things at some point. Pretty cool stuff from HP. No price yet on this one, but uh, I'm sure it will uh, come with a pretty decent price tag when it's available. So I don't like to usually do interviews on these dispatches, but I got somebody very interesting here you should all meet. Uh, this is Robbie Cottrell. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm well. So, Robbie, why don't you tell us about what you got in your hand here? And there's a, there's a big story behind this thing, too. So let's start off, though, with the lock. What do we got here? Well, basically, this is a Benji lock, and it's the world's first uh, traditional pad lock with fingerprint technology, which means that not only you can open it with the ease of your fingertips, but also with a set of traditional keys. Um, in less words, a hybrid. And now the story behind this is that you developed this yourself on your own. Um, you went on Shark Tank. What happened after that? Well, after that, it's been a crazy experience. Um, I got to deal with uh, Kevin O'Leary, uh, Mr. Wonderful. And then after that, now we just uh, starting tomorrow unveiling the Benji Lock Mini and this version as well. We won a CS 2018 Innovation Award. And uh, we'll have a great week. Uh, it's been amazing. I mean, the whole Shark Tank experience has been uh, a uh, dream come true. So it's a it's a uh, something to tell your viewers that if you ever ever have a, a passion for something, don't believe the naysayers. Just go for it. And I'm here. So blessed to talk to you today. Pretty pretty cool stuff. And we're blessed to talk to you as well. And now you you, you linked up with Brink Security, who's manufacturing the lock itself, right? So there. And I guess it's been a pretty rapid movement here from the time you were on Shark Tank to now. What happened? Well, I gotta tell you, the Shark Tank episode was October. And in less than two months, we already have developed, working on the two versions of the lock, and it's going to be available summertime of this year. So, yeah, it's, a, it's a pretty much of a blessing partnering with a great company that it's already in the industry. And for me, just to be a normal guy with kids at home and everything, so, you know. You fell on some bad luck right when you started developing this, so it was a kind of a neat story about that. So how did the, how did the in, in, inspiration for this lock come about? Well, the uh, inspiration actually started, um, I was working three years ago, well, almost four years ago in uh, real estate, uh, and six months into the job, I got laid off. The thing was that I got laid off in the month of December, and the same day I got laid off, my daughter was born at nighttime. So that whole transition, I got depressed, overweight, but going to the gym on a daily basis, that's how I noticed how people were uh, securing their lockers, and some people left their keys inside. Other were having issues with Bluetooth, so I said to myself, how come there's just not a lock? Simple, no app needed, that you can just open your fingerprint, but also with a key. That way you can uh, break the whole age tendency of anyone, even my four-year-old son can use it, up to a 90-year-old person, so. Programming with your fingerprint on here, we did, uh, we had, this is a program to somebody else right now, but we, we unlocked it earlier. But it's nice, too, that if the battery dies, you can just use the key with it, too. So. Correct. 
Correct. And that was the whole goal, just a, a simple hybrid. And the beauty of uh, the technology is that it's going to go beyond the padlock. So with God's faith, we'll see how everything goes. But this summertime, I'm very excited. Is a smaller one coming out as well? Exactly, yeah. The Benji Lock Mini, which won the 2018 CS Innovation Award. And it will be displayed at the Innovation Award Showcase and also at our booth. Great. We'll have to check that out at the booth tomorrow. And uh, really, congratulations on all of this. It's, uh, it's kind of the American dream, right? It is, it is. And, uh, and again, to all your viewers that sometimes if you have an idea, just take, take, take little steps. Every day is not going to be easy, but... Uh, you can make it happen. So we're here at the ZTE booth, and this is the Axon M, and it looks like a regular Android smartphone, but if I do this, you get a second screen here that lights up, and right now we have it on its dual screen mode, so I can run two different apps on here at the same time. So, uh, for example, we've got one app running on the right side of the device and another one uh, running on the left-hand side of the device, which is really kind of neat. So um, it doesn't do split screen, but if you got this, you really don't need split screen. It folds up like so, and you can use it as a regular phone after that. Uh, 725 bucks for this one. It's exclusive to AT&T here in the United States. Uh, it might be hard to get a case for this, so they have like a bumper uh, that at least protect it from drops and whatnot, but the other screen will be on the backing here. One of the cool things is that you can kind of put it into a tent mode like this, and then mirror the displays so you can be sitting across for some, from somebody and both watch the uh, same thing at the same time. It's always kind of neat to see some of these experiments uh, make it to market, and uh, we'll see how this one does, but I just thought it was kind of a cool thing. So over here at the WD slash SanDisk booth with some new stuff to check out. Uh, the first thing is a little portable SSD. I love these things because I use them for video editing. Uh, this one is a SanDisk branded drive. Uh, wicked fast, obviously, because it's SSD. We'll have to get one in to test it. Uh, IP55 rated, so not, I mean, it's waterproof to some degree. If you drop it in the toilet or something, you may have to pull it out, unfortunately, but it should survive that. Uh, not so great for diving and that kind of thing, but rugged and great for uh, taking out on a photography trip or something. You can hook it onto your bag with some kind of carabiner or something. So really nice little rugged drive. They also have updated their wireless My Passport drive. We looked at this one about a year or two ago. And what's cool about these is that they have an SD card slot in the side here and you can dump your camera cards or your drone cards or whatever to the hard drive built into this without a computer. But the advantage of this new one here now is that this is solid state, so there are no moving parts. And of course, it's faster. So if you are connecting it directly to a computer, you'll get the SSD speed out of this when you go to edit your video. So you can dump your video out in the field, plug it in and get a full SSD speed here. Battery on this lasts about 10 hours. It has Wi-Fi. It works with the MyCloud app, similar to what we looked at with the device when we reviewed it. So the uh, little SSD here starts at around 129 bucks for the 250 gigabyte version. Uh, this one, 250 gigs, around 229. And again, we'll try to get these things in for a full review on the channel. So that is going to end this evening of CES. It's almost tomorrow already. We're about quarter of 11 p.m. Uh, so I'm going to go back home and edit all this now and upload it. So we saw a lot of cool stuff. What I'm looking for on this trip are some unique and different things to show you because there's so much coverage of CES. I can show you every generic TV and computer and everything else, but we try to differentiate ourselves a little bit here. So we're going to be uh, hitting the Sands Convention Center tomorrow where all of the startups are. I'm going to try to do two days there, at least a day and a half, hopefully, and find a lot of the cool hidden gems of the show while we're out there. That is the plan that we're going to be doing there. But some cool stuff today, definitely that new six tuner unit from uh, Silicon Dust for HD Home Run, our sponsor, uh, something I'm looking forward to and a lot of other stuff too. So if you have heard of things that I should go check out, uh, let me know down in the comment section below because I need some ideas as I am uh, wandering around CES. And then uh, Wednesday, we're going to be hopefully doing a self-driving car demo as well as checking out some of the larger companies as well. And uh, we'll see what we see. So stay tuned. Lots more to come. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Steve Blixt, Stanley Taub, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.